Hey guys, Bunton25 here, watch the launch of MetOpsC on a Soyuz from Kuru. And also in the chat, there's also Scott Manley here, so. Stress with you, Scott. Yeah, the second converter is retracted. The engine has ignited. Now, Soyuz has a long ramp up thing. Also, yeah, I intend to watch the Pegasus later. But now, Soyuz. There she goes. <laughs> Things are looking good so far. Hopefully they don't have the same valve problem. But I doubt it at this point. Twice in a row. Probably not going to happen. Quite cloudy there, I see. Coming out nicely though, to be fair. Are they going to call out Max Q or anything of the like? We are off. Metopsy has started its journey. Flying through the very atmosphere that it's going to be sending us information about. Yes. We're Two others have like in close proximity. And he's Telling the things going according to plan. Yes, that's what they said for the first time. So. going to orbit our planet north to south, so we are going to deliver it on a polar orbit. We're burning 20 so engines at the moment. We've moment. got four on the core stage and four on each one of those boosters. No, you don't. You have one with four engine bells, not counting the burners. And the boosters are doing all the work. They only burn for two minutes, but that's long enough. For Soyuz to escape the pull of our planet. Well, it's not escaping; it's more going fast enough that you out. Right now. That you kind of go fast enough so that. Gravity. gravity, of course, makes us stick to our planet, but it stops us. Stops us from flying off into Let's space. Let's see if we get a nice Korolev cross. Or Korolev. An awful lot of firepower to do that. Yeah, that's separation. <laughs> Clean separation of all four boosters. Four boosters now being. Jettisoned. Separation du premier étage. And we have confirmation there from the range operations manager. So we saw those with our own eyes, and we're now burning the main core stage, known as the Block A, and it's the engine that you can see there. Stabilisation correct du lanceur. Stabilisation is correct, all going according to plan. Uh, from the range operations manager there. Two kilometers per second. Altitude on the bottom left of the screen, 80. Quite quickly approaching the Carmen line there. Planet. The distance, if we were to draw a straight line across the Earth, from the launch pad to the position of the launcher, 131. Kilometers. And our speed on the bottom right, that's kilometers per second, of course, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, per second. So there we go, past the Carmen line. traveling incredibly fast, and uh, we'll be getting even faster. Amazing to see such beautiful pictures of the uh, launcher. So those clouds actually managed to move away just at the right moment. I wonder when they're going to switch over to the animation. Coming up to the scheduled moment for the fairing to be jettisoned. The fairing being the front, the nose, the tip of the Never vehicle say that tip we saw in relation earlier, to this. housing the satellite and protecting it from the rigors of the launch. Things like because rockets are already quite the acoustic high, vibrations at launch, which are very uh, loud, of course. Pair. Yeah, you can see it's past midnight here, can't you? And we have separation of the fairing, which comes in two halves, which is why he said separation of the two halves of the fairing. Did he? I think it has to be crunch. So, our satellite is now exposed to space, and we are officially in space. We've been in space for quite a while. We are well, Soyuz has been in space for quite a while. Coming up to 150 kilometers above Earth, we actually uh, uh, arrived in space when we reached 100 kilometers, which is the official Just said that. <laughs> line, the official boundary with space. 
still following the launcher with our cameras, which is quite remarkable to see it now, four and a half minutes going deeper and deeper into space. Oh, we're approaching the separation. On the top right -hand oh, hello. This is the first is time I've seen the this. Trajectory of the launcher, the planned trajectory. And the cross is the actual position of the launch vehicle. I'm fairly sure that's fl flame out of the box. Okay. And to get further away, you can see there we're. Now 175 kilometers high, and we can still see the dot of the engine. And we have separation there, confirmation from the range operations manager. That we the second stage really of our could be just because it's too far. Ah, oh, yeah, 500 kilometers away. Yeah. Close now to four kilometers per second. All going well. All going according to plan. Well, I'm currently debating whether. I Although we'll stay for and the Met Op. The flight directorate, as See I separation. Earlier, we I think I might not. I might just stay for the, the first burn and then leave. This is the Arian Space Top Management Team. They take all the final decisions in the event of any unplanned situations. And here as well we have the uh, joint Russian and European teams sitting shoulder to shoulder. So we can see our satellite for the first time. There it is, Metop C. Front. Very so, big thing uh, to be launched in the Soyuz. Never seen a launch there. before. To the left hand side is what remains of the rocket. Then uh, it's sort of in the middle just after that white fan. And the upper stage, the gold round circular structure. And then right at the front is the satellite, and it's all folded up, of course. Um, ready to unfold when it separates. We've launched a lot of satellites for UMETSAT. Let's take a look at them. Three, two, one, two. What version of Ariane is that, does anyone know? So I presume at this point this would be Ariane 4. Yeah, that's obviously an Ariane 5, but obviously an early version of shorter. See, I'm, I'm fairly sure I saw the launch of MSG4, because at that point I was actually watching them. Yeah, I, d I wouldn't have seen that up being there. I'm fairly sure I've seen that launch. Well, to be fair, all Iron Five launches look the same, and mostly the same. So there you have it. Iron Space has launched all the satellites for you, Metsat. Those were the twelve, and today, of course, we are launching the thirteenth satellite, Metop C. It's en route right now to its final slot in space. And there on the right-hand side, you can see we uh, lifted off from the Guiana Space Center on the northeastern coast of French Guiana. And Galio is the name of the tracking station here at the Guiana Space Center. We're using telemetry to track the vehicle during the flight. Soyuz sends information to the ground stations along its flight path. And they then send that data to the teams here at the Guiana Space Center. And this allows Arian Space to monitor the flight in real time. It also means they can do an evaluation after the event and check out how it all went and see if they need to make any adjustments for future flights. So it's a very important process. And our telemetry stations tonight are Galio. We saw that. That was the one in um, French Guiana. And then we'll be picking up the signal next in Bermuda in the Caribbean. Then we've got St. Hubert. That's in Quebec. And New Norcia in Australia. This is the scheduled moment when we pick up the signal in the tracking station in Bermuda. So the ground station... Yep, oh, we that's just had confirmation, confirmation of that there from the range operations manager. Uh, our confirmations take a little bit longer to, to get to us. Um, the ground stations send the information back to the CSG, the Guiana Space Center, uh, but it has to go via Moscow to be validated first, so it can take a little oh, time. Oh, third stage. 
That's Brenda. It wouldn't separate that quickly because what they do is they separate and open a valve on the side which kind of pushes all the oxygen out, which pushes it away. Separation there of the third stage. And we're looking at these CGI images, computer generated images, which are showing us what the experts have planned and calculated to be happening to the launcher and the satellites. So they are a simulation of what's happening in space. So we're looking at the frigate upper stage, that round circular structure back there. It's what's left of the launch vehicle. Yeah, it's that, getting ready to switch its that escalator on. quickly, or we're the escalator, in what we call the pre-burn phase. It's giving a quick burst of acceleration right now and pushing the fluids back into the back of the uh, tanks. To yeah, make that's sure basically it's firing the monoprops, the I presume. It's a little bit like it, when you press the throttle in the car and you get pushed back against the seat. And this is the scheduled moment now for the frigate upper stage. Not really an adequate comparison there. Because I presume they're talking about needing to Which push it back so the fuel gets pumped into the engine. In the journey when frigate it's more like push starting a car, honestly. It's a bit like an orbital taxi driver. Its job is to deliver our satellite to its drop point in space. frigate. And he's confirmed that we now have the first ignition of the frigate upper stages engine. Some of the teams here in the control center. If you look at the right hand side of the screen, you can see the frigate upper stage there. It's on circular structure with six spherical tanks, which are organized in a circle. Two are fuel, two four are oxidizer, two, uh, two are avionics. Two of those for avionics. That's the sort of thing that you find in the cockpit of a plane. Flight control systems. All right, it's frigate monoprop. Communications, that kind of thing. And the satellite is yeah, attached it is using a very special yeah. dispenser. Is it or adapter? Anyone know what fuel fuses? is? The first stage is a, a really clever piece of kit. It was originally designed as an interplanetary probe to travel around the solar system. Well, not around the solar system to be on a on board specific. Soyuz, and it can switch its engine on and off up to 20 times. Of course, that here will be maybe two or three if you take its passengers pretty well anywhere they need to go. And it makes Soyuz Within ideal fuel. for launching all kinds of spacecraft to all kinds of orbits, including collisions and, of course... Yes, um, that's what Soyuz is for. It's meant to be the big thing. Satellites like today. It's meant to be the rock that hurls everything up there quickly and easily. Our satellite. And that's our flight path. So we're now picking up the signal at the tracking station in St. Hubert in Quebec. It's just outside Montreal. I believe that they're important there. The Canadian Space Agency has its head office in the borough. Huh. That's something I didn't know. I can see thank you. And we've been hearing no, something to do with Russia. I don't... Going to I know they usually the do launch. Is going to be providing important and accurate launch Weather predictions from 12 coverage hours to of 10 some launches. In advance. I mean, that's how I saw my first boat and just vital information going up. The land surfaces. <laughs> Very important. I'll put my if we're that. to get a handle on how our sneeze. planet's climate is changing, which I'm sure you all agree is absolutely paramount now as we see temperatures rising. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Climate change is real. Stop denying it. What's what they say? Extinction. Sure, it would be shut down. But there, there we go. engine off, and that's what it looks like. This is the scheduled moment for the engine shutdown. For the onboard computer to send the command. Next phase of the flight is known as the ballistic phase. That means that we have no propulsion. Ballistic means traveling without propulsion and coasting without the engine. Sometimes we have very long ballistic phases, but for this flight, it's not too long. It's about 38 uh, minutes. 
going yeah, to take not a break in a second to, uh, while we wait for the ballistic phase. During that time, uh, we will have a planned gap in visibility of the ground stations. That means that we are scheduled to lose... And we have confirmation there that the engine has indeed switched off. So, uh, yes, we'll have a, a scheduled um, gap in visibility. That means that we are scheduled to lose the signal at the tracking station in St. Hubert. We've started the manu um, orientation maneuvers. Uh, so we'll have a planned gap for about 20 minutes um, after launch, and then we plan to pick the signal up again at the station in New Norcia, 31 and a half minutes later. And that means that we won't be getting any information from the launcher during that time. Per perfectly normal. It's all part of the plan. So, I'm going to take a break. We will be back at uh, 10.24 Kuru time, 1.24 Greenwich Mean Time, and 2.24 in the morning in Darmstadt. Let's look at the launch again. We lifted off uh, 15 minutes ago from the pad here at the Guiana Space Center. This is what it looked like. See you shortly. All right, guys, that was launch of Metal Sea. I'm sorry, but I really can't say this. I need some. Uh, I'm buzzing 25. Goodbye.